Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us once again. In this segment, we'll be speaking with Dr. Aaron King, family medicine and diabetes specialist at MedFirst Primary Care, a Baptist Medical Center affiliate. He's going to talk about the recent FDA approval of a label update for Novo Nordisk's Rebelsis as a first-line option for adults living with type 2 diabetes. He's joined today by Beto, who is living with type 2 diabetes, and he's going to share his experience with being prescribed Rebelsis to manage his condition along with diet and exercise. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, both Dr. Aaron King and Beto. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. Well, Dr. King, briefly uh, tell us a bit about yourself and then Beto, if you would do the same when Dr. King uh, finishes. Yeah, thank you, Neil. So, yes, my name is Dr. Aaron King. I'm a family medicine physician. I originally trained in the United States Navy, and upon leaving the Navy, I had an interest in diabetes and had the opportunity to open an outpatient diabetes clinic here in San Antonio, Texas. I ran that for about five years and then decided to go back into primary care where I do both full uh, scope family medicine as well as uh, diabetes care. So I take care of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes along with uh, general medical conditions uh, that you might experience in primary care. And Beto? Uh, my name is uh, Beto Madrigal. I was uh, born in Mexico and then from Mexico we think, uh, I moved to California. And from California right now, we reside in uh, Longview, Texas, with my wife and two kids. Um, and I've been living with type 2 diabetes since July of 21. And ever since then, it's been a heck of a ride, man. Well, doctor, first of all, how do people develop type 2 diabetes? What are some of the, the common signs and symptoms that we need to be on the lookout for? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So when it comes to the development of type 2 diabetes, I like to think of it as a combination of what we would say nature and nurture. And what we mean by that is on the nature side, these are our genetics. You know, this is what our parents kind of passed on to us. And they actually have a very strong role in the development of type 2 diabetes. So a lot of people will often think, oh, this is just you know, my fault, my lifestyle. But it's not. Genetics play a very strong role here. And then the second place, uh, in the second piece, is actually, you know, the environment, right, the, the nurture, as we say. So this would include things like your diet, the choices of foods that you make, your activity level and exercise level. But we even know things that like, like stress or sleep play a very strong role in the development of diabetes. So poor sleep, too much stress, not enough exercise, all these things contribute, and those two factors kind of coalesce to the development of type 2 diabetes. In terms of symptoms, you know, it turns out that most people, as they develop diabetes, it happens very slowly over months to years. And because the body is good at normalizing things, it often doesn't feel different. So many people may develop diabetes and be completely unaware. We do have a fairly large percentage of our patients, or our population, I should say, that have diabetes at this moment and are maybe not aware of that. So it is important that you regularly see your healthcare provider and get tested annually, especially if you're at risk. Um, or have a family history of diabetes to make sure that you're not developing it. But if your blood glucose gets high enough, then we start to develop symptoms uh, uh, such as eating and uh, drinking too much, maybe losing weight unintentionally, feeling thirsty all the time, or urinating often. And so if you start to develop those symptoms, you also might want to seek out care and get tested. Beto, you said that you've been diagnosed re rather recently. What was it that yes, sent you to the doctor? What was it that made you say, hey, I think I need to get checked out and then subsequently being diagnosed? Well, like Dr. King said, I had a lot of the, the average symptoms or the normal symptoms. Um, and like he also said, I was blaming them on the things going around in the in like in my lifetime at the, at the time. So I was uh, drinking a lot of water. I was urinating a lot. And at the time, it was summertime. So I was like, oh, you know, it, it's hot. I'm working harder, so I'm thirstier. And then I was like, well, I'm going to the bathroom more often because I'm drinking more water. Until so one night, I think I had a glass of water before bed, and I got up to go to the restroom probably like 10 times within a few hours. And that morning, I woke up and told, I talked to my wife about it. And she's like, yeah, you got you to gotta get looked at. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we decided to make a doctor's appointment and um, go, go go speak to my doctor. And that's when he told me, yeah, you, you're, uh, you have diabetes. And like also Dr. Keene mentioned, you could go a long time without 
with the symptoms and not realize them. The doctor did mention that he believed that I've, I've had it for years prior to actually seeing, mm. seeing symptoms and noticing them. Is that something that is common where they've had it for quite a while? And you mentioned that there were many people now who have it, but they're, they're not aware. Is this something that you can have for years and years and not be aware? So, uh, yes, it, it's very common. Uh, matter of fact, we would estimate somewhere between 25% of the uh, population that has diabetes. There's, there's another 25%, I should say, that probably has diabetes and is unaware of the fact that they have it. Uh, the average patient, when they're diagnosed, probably has had an abnormal glucose for somewhere between 12 and 18 months. And this can uh, vary a little bit depending on uh, the, the specific person and their family history and their traits and just some of their sensitivities to their own body. But uh, So you will see variations from that. But 12 to 18 months is a good um, estimate for the average population. Now, it's my understanding that Rebelsis, uh, developed by Novo Nordisk, is uh, now an option for adults living with type 2 diabetes, just like Beto. Talk about this compound. Why is it now frontline? Well, yeah, that's a really good question. And, and to answer it, let me frame it with how we think about type 2 diabetes and how we've treated it for years. So for many years, the guidelines would suggest that we should use metformin first. As you may know, metformin is a common drug that's been around for a long time. It really has been that that drug that we reach for uh, initially when treating type 2 diabetes because of its safety and its um, long-term data that we have. Now, that being said, over the last few years or several years, uh, thoughts have shifted, and and medicines like Rebelsis um, have uh, much greater potential not only to lower A1C but also to improve weight. And we define diabetes as having what we call eight core pathophysiologic defects, so eight kind of problems that are wrong metabolically within the body. And one of the downsides to metformin is it only really attacks one of those eight core defects. And a medication like Rebelsis can can, uh, affect or or really correct uh, five or six different core defects of the eight. And so it's a combination of all these different factors that make it very appealing. And more recently, within the last uh, couple of years, what we've seen from the diabetes guidelines is that they've shifted away from this mandate that we have to use metformin and have given us avenues and encouraged us to maybe consider other therapies uh, like Rebelsis. And this year now, uh, the FDA has uh, changed its label recommendation, allowing uh, Rebelsis to be used as first-line therapy in type 2 diabetes. And so this really opens up a very... Uh, uh, good avenue for our patients that they might have had to wait longer in the treatment of their type 2 diabetes to get to in years prior. Beto, what has been your experience having been uh, prescribed Rebelsis? And then either of you can give us a, a website where listeners can learn more. Well, with my experience with uh, being prescribed Rebelsis, um, it's, it's helped me lose the weight. It's helped me get my A1C down to a, a level that my doctor is very happy with. And, and as far as my weight, at a, at a weight where my doctor is very healthy with, it, it's real simple. You know, wake up in the morning, take my take my pill, go about my day. It, it's, it's that simple. Have you experienced any uh, side effects of note? Uh, me personally, I have not. But mm-hmm. you know, everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are there any side effects, doctor, that one should be aware of? Yeah, that's a great question. So. What this medication does is it, it mimics a hormone that we all make naturally when we digest food, and that feeds back to help our pancreas make insulin, which helps us process incoming uh, sugars and carbohydrates correctly. But it also slows our digestion and helps us feel full. And these are normal signaling mechanisms that we all rely on to eat the appropriate amount of food. And so because of that, uh, we do see some weight reduction, as we mentioned, but, but you can also sometimes have GI-related side effects from this medication like nausea. And while those, level, those uh, levels tend to be fairly mild, uh, everyone needs to monitor themselves for that. And the, uh, the provider or prescriber should be uh, making appropriate dose adjustments to make sure that the medicine is comfortable for the patient. And a website where our listeners can learn more. Yeah, so just simply if, if uh, anyone would want to go to www.rebelsis.com, 
There's all kinds of great information on the specifics of the medication, side effects, some of the uh, positive effects and benefits of the medication, and also some uh, cost and coverage information for uh, anyone that might want to get a prescription. And that's R-Y-B-E-L-S-U-S, correct? Yes. Great, great. Dr. King, Beto, I appreciate both of you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. It's been a pleasure speaking with you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Aaron King and Beto Madrigal. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.